one thing I want to do is talk about the, the list that we tried out earlier and see what kind of changes I would make if I wanted to test it further. Because I am, and once again, I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest with you right here. I'm currently considering bringing this deck to uh, the regional this weekend. The, the Melfi Sprite or Sprite in general. And when we tested this earlier, we only did a couple of matches, but I'm already noticing a couple of issues. The first issue is one that I already knew beforehand. I don't like Droll and Lockbird, this format. I think Droll and Lockbird sucks. I think we take that out. Um, everything else I think is fine as to how it performed. However, I think it would not be unreasonable to go down to two Fenrir's. I think Fenrir's is one of those cards that I could see being a, a two of reasonably well it doesn't i don't think fenrir has to be a three of necessarily um one thing that i want to try one thing i want to try is gamma i want to try gamma although i'm not sure if it convinces me yet but i i, I mean i hate the fact that i would need to try to try uh to play driver but like you could cut a fenrir and then make it a dry a gamma deck like this. And then the question is, do we want teleport or not? You know? But then we would have... Then we would have uh, the problem that teleport, like... We have to cut a non-engine card for teleport. And the question is, is teleport the best non-engine? I'm not sure. Wouldn't you rather play one Druid, one Baldrake? Maybe, but I think Druid Swarm being removal by itself is pretty valuable. You know? But I don't know. I mean, I, I, I yeah, I, I think something like that. I don't know if we need Teleport, and I don't know if we need Gamma. I think this is a solid baseline for the deck, 36 cards. I also don't know... Once again, I we didn't need Gamma Burst in any of those games earlier. And I don't I can't really think of many scenarios where you would need Gamma Burst. I think if I had to if I had to uh if I had to guess, I think the reason why a lot of people test Gamma Burst and then like Gamma Burst is because Gamma Burst makes you not think. You know what I mean? Gamma Burst, I, I, I think Gamma Burst can win you games, and it, it is a good card, but a lot of the games I think that you win with Gamma Burst, I think a lot of the games you win with Gamma Burst are games that you could win either way, because it means that you get to, you know, you, you have to have like a bunch of monsters on the field, and you get to your battle phase, you get to all, they all connect and do damage. I think that's a scenario where very often you can win either way, right? Uh, I don't really see a scenario where you really need Gamma Burst. So, I feel like whenever you are testing and you win a game with Gamma Burst, you don't have to... The, the, the learning from that is not, hey, I won with Gamma Burst, so the card is good. You have to ask yourself, would I maybe have won that game without Gamma Burst too? And I think very often the answer to that question will be yes. So I'm leaning towards cutting the Gamma Burst. Uh, for Double Cross, I'm not sure yet if it's necessary. I'm not sure yet if it's necessary. Why Gadarla and not Gamma Seal? Okay, that's a very easy thing to answer because Shadow Mosquito inflicts damage equal to the attack of your opponent's monster. And with Gadarla, you only need to attack three times. Well, four times, including the mosquito counter attack, and then three attacks to deal damage, right? And that's that's twenty-seven times three is eighty-one. So that's why I think Godarla is the best kaiju in sprite. I I think it's I think it's easily the best kaiju in sprite. The Kashira clapback does scare me if I haven't wiped the board. Um I I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, I understand, but 
against Kash Tira, if you have this many monsters, you I don't think you need Gamma Burst necessarily to OTK. You could also just like Shadow Mosquito, right? It's like it, it's not that hard to Shadow Mosquito OTK against the uh, uh, against Kash Tira because like they have a Rice Heart. You bait the Rice Heart, and then you just have to attack three times into a Rice Heart. Like uh, Gamma Burst, I don't know. I really don't know if if Gamma Burst is necessary. I mean. I I'm I wouldn't hate to to keep trying it. I just feel like if you take out cars like like gamma burst and whatnot, if that enables me to fit like more non-engine, I think that might be worth it. But I'm trying to think of non-engine that I could play. I mean, we could play the psi frames now. Uh, we could play the psi frames now, and that'd be okay. Right, that'd be okay. And I'm I'm also gonna be honest with you, I'm not in love with the Melfies. I'm not in love with the Melfies. I don't hate the Melfies either. Basically, I how do I say this? I like the idea behind behind the Melfies, but in the execution, I'm not super happy with them. Let me tell you the idea again, because I, I already, I, I, I very often see the question of why, why Melfi Sprite? You know, what's the advantage of this version? The advantage of the Melfi package is that you do not need to draw them. And you do not need to resolve Gigantic Sprite to get to them, right? This means you can let your Gigantic be hand traps. Uh, they, they can hand trap your Gigantic, they can prevent your Gigantic. It doesn't matter, you don't need it to play. Because you have another rank 2 that leads you into your entire engine, right? And that is decent. I think it is very valuable that Melfi of the Forest is a good generic rank 2. Because there is really no ideal... Like, it, it, the, the Melfi of the Forest is like the best possible end board card for Sprite. Next to Totally Awesome. But for Totally Awesome, of course, you need to draw Swap Frog or you need to resolve Gigantic. The reason why Melfi of the Forest is perfect is because it's, a, it's an XYZ. It is an XYZ. And um, that means it, it synergizes with Sprite Sprint. I think the, the key as to why this engine or this, the Melfi engine is, is solid is because it synergizes with Sprite Sprint. Because you can leave sprite sprint on the board as a piece of interaction i think that's the key behind all of this right if there was another if there was another rank two that you could just play that would work the same way i think that could also be good but i don't think there is anything i don't think there is any rank two xyz that's that you could consider good next to the melfi right like i mean you you might say oh Melfi uh, what is what is it called you might say Gin Buster right and Gin Buster is good the problem with Gin Buster is it has no synergy with Sprite Sprint because you if you detach from Gin Buster with Sprite Sprint you can't use its effect anymore you can't use its effect anymore because it needs both materials right the PK rank two is kind of good ah uh, this one. What do you mean this one is kind of good? How is this kind of good? It's not very good. It's not a quick effect. Do you ever play Omega to make Fenrir live after Gamma on a Rise Heart? Uh, I don't think so, no. I think the only other rank 2 that could be considered good as an end board piece is Mannequin Cat. But the problem is Mannequin Cat also requires you to run some bricks, I feel like. I feel like Mannequin Cat doesn't work. I mean, I guess if you play Fenrir, Mannequin Cat can be okay against Kashtira, but not actually that good. Like, I don't think there's any other rank 2. There's no other rank 2 that, that works here. There's nothing. Unfortunately. If there was any if there was any rank two that didn't require you to play main deck stuff, I would instantly play that, I think. I think I would instantly do that, but there's nothing. 
which is awkward. And then, I don't know about teleport, but if you play Gamma, I think teleport isn't the worst idea. I don't think you need to play three teleport. There's nothing, there's nothing that forces you to play three teleports. You could just play one or two. I don't know if I would go over 40 for it. Like, in, in this case, if this is your list, you could just very well just play one teleport and call it a day. Just like, you know. You're not, you're not dependent on seeing teleport in your hand. It's just sometimes a nice extender. I don't, I don't see a reason to go over 40 for teleport. You know, something like this could be okay. I think the side deck, um, I think the side deck is quite solid. Um, I guess let me explain the base deals. Let me explain the base deals while, um, while I'm at it. I think base deals are the best side deck card if you want something for branded and math mech. I think as plain and simple, I like those a lot. Uh, why are you running the Cash Tier of Fenrir? Uh, very simple. You don't have to run it, but I think it's a very strong independent um, tech card in this format where it helps you break boards. It helps you go first. It's a solid card either way. I think every hand is is happy about drawing one Fenrir. Like it's like, yeah, it it just forces interaction. It forces hand traps sometimes. It it, it breaks boards very easily. I I think it's just a very solid card. You could run the third Fenrir instead of the teleport. Yeah, the the, the one teleport is kind of arbitrary. But sometimes when your deck looks like this, when you already have 39 cards, there's nothing wrong with just putting a random card in there just because, like, you know, you appreciate the extender sometimes. You're not dependent on it. Otherwise, it'd be a three of, you know. But, yeah. Would you say that Fenrir is worth playing in a Shark XYZ deck? Uh, if it doesn't conflict with your deck, then why not? I mean, uh, doesn't the shark deck might make crook cook sometimes? I don't know. What about a second red? I wouldn't hate that either. Maybe it's a, maybe a second red is fine. Maybe a second red is fine. Don't you just want to play gamma burst then? I mean, I've just I've just walked you through my logic why I don't like um why I don't like um gamma burst. So no. What is the scissor monster in your list? It's soul scissors. What soul scissors does is, and I'm not sure if you need to play this card. I, I, actually, you don't need to play this card, but I'll tell you why I'm using it. Um, so what this card does is, if a monster on the field is destroyed by a battle or card effect and sent to the graveyard, while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. If this card is special summoned from the graveyard, you can target a monster your opponent controls, destroy it. You can only use each effect of soul scissors once per turn. The reason why this card is in this deck is because if you can set up this card in your graveyard during your first turn combo, it provides a very useful disruption. Um, because as soon as your opponent, you know, starts attacking over your monsters, you can bring this back and pop another monster, or you can like negate something and destroy it by the help of uh, Sprite Red um, or, or Herald of the Arclight. You can negate a monster effect and then destroy the monster, and then Soul Scissors will come back and destroy another card. The reason why I like the one of Soul Scissors, at least in theory, is that when you have your normal combo, right? You have your Nimble Beaver plus Sprite. You actually have no good monster to summon off of Gigantic Sprite. The reason why you don't have a good target for Gigantic Sprite is because the Melfis don't require you to summon them with Gigantic Sprite, right? You, you, you search them with the other XYZ. You don't summon them with Gigantic. Um... So what I previously mentioned as like an upside for the Melfis, the fact that you don't need to resolve Gigantic to get them, is a little bit weird in this, in this moment because when we do resolve the Gigantic Sprite, we don't actually have like a broken target like Swap Frog, you know? So playing the one of Soul Scissors in that case, you know, if you do pull off your full combo, just getting the free Soul Scissors onto the field and then linking it off into the graveyard just makes your board that little bit more disruptive this is what previous versions of the deck or a lot of my previous versions of sprite have been running one iperia for right that was one iperia the the idea here is that we we play prosperity so whenever we draw prosperity we cannot draw with iperia so we want to make sure it always works also um the theory is that getting more making your board stronger or harder to break is 
maybe better than getting another card in hand because that after you've already done your full combo there's not that many cards you can actually draw into that will help solidify your position right you, if you draw into fenrir that's too late your board's already full you draw into gamma that's too late you have monsters right the only cards you can draw with an iperia after you full comboed are ash book and imperm and i guess double cross smashers so like there is a couple cards you can draw but not that many Right? So that's the idea behind Solstice, is to just give value to, to your Gigantic no matter what. I think is the baseline idea. The Akashic Magician is kind of like the flex spot in the extra deck. I think the Nightmares and Akashic are not mandatory. I just put in Akashic because of the, the Kaijus, right? I like the idea of going Kaiju and then bouncing it with Akashic. I think that's a solid interaction that comes up sometimes. Also, sometimes people just don't play around Akashic placement and then becomes a free removal. With with Gamma in the deck, you might want to consider a Lambda. You do you might want to consider a Lambda if you're playing Akashic. And then always uh I think IP is always a a consideration. But yeah. That's that. I, I do think I'm like I'm like 90% sure that I'm gonna play some version of Sprite on Saturday at the regionals. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what's gonna happen, and I'm I the, I don't know if it's this specific one. I do see some issues with it, but I will I will come up with something. I'll, you'll probably see it before YCS London. Even I'll probably make a deck profile on it even before YCS London, unless unless I try it and it just feels like exactly right. Like if I try the deck and it feels so perfect that I don't even want to change much about it, then I might keep it a secret until YCS London. But like. Most likely, most likely, I will be uh, I'll be sharing the the thought process on on YouTube on like Sunday.